Hello everyone, welcome back to A Message of Hope. My name is Monet Souza and today it is a great joy to welcome on my friend Scala. She is the founder of Sustained Stories and many of you may recognize her from my TV show, Anchored. Scala, it is such a joy to be with you today. Thank you for saying yes to being on the show. Of course, Monet, thank you so much for having me. It's honestly just a joy to see you and be with you. So I'm really excited for our conversation. Yes, same here. And we do have the great opportunity of talking about friendship and seeking community, um, which is a topic very near and dear to my heart. But before we get into that, can you open us up in a prayer? Of course. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, you say that when two or three are gathered in your midst, Lord, you say, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are right there in their midst. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today. Thank you for allowing Monet and I to be together in the hope of glorifying you in our conversation, of sharing our hearts with each other and those online praying and being here with us. We ask that you guide those hearts as well, that you guide everyone listening and watching to just take home whatever they need, whatever that you've been asking of them, that they're able to glorify you in the actions that they take after this call, during this call, um, and for the rest of their lives here on earth, Lord, that you're guiding us to sanctity through, through our conversations. We ask that you especially place us in a moment of peace in this conversation, all through the intercession of your Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beautiful, Scala. Thank you so much. Of course. So for those who don't know you, who are tuning into this episode, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I can. Wow. Okay. Who am I? <laughs> I'm a daughter of God, first and foremost. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Um, I'm actually a grad student right now at Harvard's Graduate School of Design, and I'm studying um, for my design master, my master's in design studies, public domain, which feels like probably really confusing, but basically it's urban planning <laughs> with a concentration in real estate. Um, but I'm actually on a gap year. So this year has been riddled with so much adventure. I was in India. I've been to London. I'll be going to Nigeria soon. Um, and I found a lot of joy in this season of, um, it feels like a lot of waiting, honestly, um, but a lot of adventure in the wait, which I'm so grateful for the Lord for bringing me on. So I've gotten to further my ministry with the same stories, um, have really great conversations with friends and meet a lot of new people. So that's kind of how, that's that's my life in this season, at least that's who I am in this, in this season, thank God. Yes, oh, that's so beautiful. And even to, you know, once people are done watching the episode, hopefully they'll watch it through to hear the conversation we're about to have, but I will be sure to also leave your YouTube channel down below in the um, description because you do, you know, you do live a very beautiful, colorful, um, faithful, joyful life. And it's so great when you capture it and you put it on your YouTube channel and we get to kind of travel along with you or we see a vlog or something. So if anyone wants to join Scala in her journeys, um, I'll leave all of your information down below as well. Thank you. Wow. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. You're welcome. So Scala, like I said, this topic is so near and dear in my heart and the scripture verse from um, the gospel of Matthew that you open us up in prayer with is one that I was even praying with a bit, mm -hmm. um, entering into this call, this interview today. But, you know, for those who are watching, typically I, or normally always, I ask my guests, what would they like to talk about? What is a topic that they're passionate about or that they are going through in their season of their life? So Scala, I would love to ask you, why was it friendship in this search for community that was the topic that came to mind. Yeah, it's a that's a huge question. <laughs> it's funny that I chose uh, this topic. And honestly, I was talking to my sister and she gave me the idea for this topic. So shout out to Jen. <laughs> She's the best. Um, and it, honestly, I've been in this season of loneliness, if I'm being very, very honest. Mm -hmm. And 
it's funny because I, I call, I'm very much the girl to just like go to events and like just meet new people or to call up the friend or to, you know, message that old friend and like have a conversation out of kind of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but the last few months in this time of like being out of my comfort zone of being a student and having that community kind of everywhere, um, it's been this search that almost feels like a never ending search <laughs> for the next year, at least until I return back from my final year of school. So um, mm. I've been really pressing into that, that desire for deep friendship um, that can, like I've, I've, it's been met, like the Lord is redeeming in so many, even our conversation right now, like the Lord is like bringing us together. Like, I just think this is so beautiful that um, this topic isn't just about me. I, I know that it's not just about me. I mean, community can never be about just yourself. <laughs> even in, in that desire, you know? So um, in this stage that I'm in of like feeling that loneliness, I pressed into those moments where I felt that joy of community and the parts of me that um, kind of needed to step away. Like I need this moment of being on my own too. So yeah, yes. that's like where I've been at in <laughs> this desire for friendship and community. That is so beautiful, Scala. And thank you for your honesty with that because yeah, it is so easy to believe like, you know, quite frankly, like if I were just strictly, like if I never even considered hearing how you were doing, hearing what was like going on in the inner workings of your heart, if I just looked at you on the front of your social media pages, I would think, oh, this girl is like the furthest away from experiencing loneliness. This is the girl who like has that community that she seeped in. But that's the thing is, you know, when it's all said and done, oftentimes it's loneliness. And this is like something I'm speaking from, like from experiences. Loneliness is oftentimes something we are experiencing interiorly. Oh, um, yeah. And then also it can show in the exterior. But at the same time, I just remember being in college and, and mm -hmm. even in high school, like experiencing this loneliness to like the umph degree. But people were like, but there's literally people all around you. And it's like, yeah, I could be in a room full of people. It doesn't matter nope. because I still am feeling the loneliness. Yeah. So how has it, and I know, um, you know, you, you were once here in Boston with us and you're part of our young adult community. So that's how Scala and I met and now you're back home in Philly. So what even, you know, for anyone who is going through loneliness, sometimes it's sparked through a change in like moving or a change in community or like you are going through a lot of change right now in your life. Has that, like, how has that specifically, I guess, fostered the loneliness that maybe you're experiencing now, or does that actually have nothing to do with it? Yeah, no, it's a huge part of it. Honestly, it's, it's that exactly what you're saying. Like you're around so many people and you have the opportunity to be around so many groups, honestly, of wonderful, incredible people. I mean, I remember being in India and everyone was so welcoming. Like it was, it truly felt like everyone wanted to share their home with me in a way yeah. that like, you know, I just wanted to take it all in. Like I just wanted to be a sponge and soak in and all of that like joy that they had for their home. And in many ways I did, but in many ways I still did, I didn't have that like person to go to. I was, I went alone. So I went to India on my own for an internship with World Heritage USA, which was super cool. And I'm so grateful for the, for the experience, but taking myself out of the comfort of home in the U S in Boston and Philly um, and going abroad so far, a place I've never been to the farthest I've ever been and, yeah. and seeing and appreciating that joy of community that they want to give me that like they truly want to outpour um, and accepting as much as I can, but also realizing that I can't take it all in. Like there, there are points, there are parts of me that just need to sit with where I'm at, sit with that I, I miss home or that I miss the friends that I have and that the nine and a half hour time difference is really hard <laughs> to mm -hmm. communicate with them um, and like recognize those points of like being with the Lord first, first and foremost in like everything that I'm doing and appreciating the the joy that I'm being offered and trying to step into that without ignoring that, that part of loneliness. Cause I think I can like, we can all like try to ignore it. We can all be like, okay, this mm -hmm. is not a place I'm, I really want to be in. These people don't really know me. I'm not as comfortable here, but let me just dive into whatever they're into. Like, let me just do it. Like, you know, get into the crowd and like, just fully dive in there and like, forget about how I'm like, how I'm feeling. But I've mm -hmm. found that when I'm bringing that to the Lord, while trying to experience the joys in, in the best, in the good, in the good that they are, um, there's so much more fruit to it. There's so much more ways that I can see 
the the honestly the ways that also I could be better a, a better friend when I'm back home or that I can be a better friend here and be more present when I face the fact that these emotions or even just these desires are still there like even if I feel like I should just be into it all I can't I you know recognizing yes. that so that's huge no it definitely is and you're even making me think right now of my high school experience of that's when I truly felt this deep loneliness. And mm. it's like all over my YouTube channel. This is like what I speak out of. This is what I give my confirmation retreats on, like all this sort of thing. Mm. But that was the first time in my life, even though, again, I'm on sports teams, I'm in clubs, I'm in a school yeah. with like many people, like I'm not physically being stripped away of being surrounded. Like I'm not physically going into isolation. But mm -hmm. it was this moment of, okay, I have a crossroads right now of either I stay on the path with the in crowd. There was only 35 girls in my class, give or take. Mm -hmm. And so either I stay on the path of like, I know who I am. Like, I know the faith I believe in. I know my morals. I know my values. Or I give some or all of that up to just get the invite to like the parties, to the like events to the whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes the, that fear, that really real fear of loneliness can creep mm -hmm. upon us. And we really are left at a crossroads. Like, are yeah. you going to give everything up of who you are just to like fight against the reality that you may be left alone for a weeknight or a weekend? Mm -hmm. But then I, it just leaves you more empty. Yeah. So it's just this, yeah, like this leaning into, and you had just said it too, this time of being with God more. And yeah. I truly believe that loneliness can spark a greater intimacy with God because at the end Absolutely. of the day, that's all you're left with. <laughs> oh, so true. That's so good, Monet. It absolutely does. I like, I... <laughs> At the same time, I'm like someone who loves to be around people. Like I truly, truly do. And I get a lot of excitement and joy yes. from it. I also, maybe I call myself like an introverted extrovert. Like, <laughs> like I'll be around people, but then like I need the day of just like kind of a retreat for myself or for like, if it's been like a, a while of just like meeting people and going out and experiencing the joys of like living with good friends, um, just like <laughs> sit back and be like, Lord, thank you for all of that. Now let's just let's just relax. Like let's read a good book together. Let's pray or go to adoration and like sit with this. Um, and that's that's that silent moment. That's the Lord retreating to the mountains to rest before going back out in his ministry. Like that's he's calling us to that moment of retreat as well in so many ways. And sometimes he kind of needs to put us in that place of feeling the loneliness there to get us to that point. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's huge. It's so huge. <laughs> Something I'm wondering, Scala, that I would love to hear your thoughts on, because obviously I can like talk about this for days, but I want to hear from you, yeah. is <laughs> someone who's watching could be like, well, you're talking, like I'm going through loneliness or being alone right now. Like, how can you speak from such a positive or hope-filled mm -hmm. lens? I can speak from it because... I've like come in and out of periods of loneliness and I've seen like what the Lord does during that. And then his goodness and faithfulness of bringing me back into community. But mm. for yourself, Scala, have you experienced this kind of loneliness before? Mm, I have, I've experienced it honestly in, um, I don't know how to explain, I guess like, so I went to Catholic university <laughs> and I love the community at Catholic, I was actually an RA for three of my four years. So I was like really diving deep in community, <laughs> like event planning, going to the ministry events, collabing with ministry. Like that was my whole life, honestly. Um, and in that you're like in these really great communities, like, and there, there are seasons when, um, like, I just really drive, like the RAs and would have like a minister collab <laughs> and I would really jive with that. And I, I'd love it. And there'd be so much I don't know, excitement in that. And I make such great friends. And then, you know, the next semester rolls around and we just don't have the same either connections or we're not paired for different things. And it, it gets to that point of like, almost like a loneliness that just feels like none, neither of us are trying hard enough for that friendship or to maintain like a friendship or be there for each other. Um, and those, those were moments where I would like, they were full seasons because a semester is a good season. It's like a good three mm -hmm. months of that feeling of desolation where you were just in a moment of really great joy and excitement. Um, but to still kind of perform in a sense as an RA was something that like was so difficult. Like you were still 
it's like forced to be in that sense of community or to be creating that sense of community um, in places where you maybe didn't, I didn't really feel comfortable sometimes, or I didn't feel like it was, I could be fully myself. Um, and yeah, I think I'm speaking from those places first and foremost of like those scenes that almost felt like every other three months, let's <laughs> think like they were, they were constantly in and out. Um, but also recognizing that in like, again, we've said this, but like in those moments of like feeling that desolation and like recognizing, recognizing it, which definitely as undergrad, I wasn't good at that to that to, that, to a great extent. But I remember um, one day I was like going to adoration and I, I had to be there. Honestly, that was, that was why I was going um, because I had like an event that I was hosting afterwards and we're supposed to go there with the, our minister partners and, and the residents and just feeling so alone. It was so weird. Like it was such a strange experience of like, you know, I have like all these friends, these, uh, the girls that I'm like an RA to, um, and the ministers and seeing that these ministers had such a great community together while I was kind of there on my own, just being a leader, um, and not, not able to give that vulnerability in that place. Um, but I found like in that moment of like, offering it to the Lord. It was literally adoration. So we're, best place to be going if you're feeling lonely, honestly. And just just knowing and having the sense that the Lord is like, I am here in this. Like I'm here in this pain. I'm here in this struggle. And there's no, you're never alone. Like that is, I think the biggest part of this, this hope for friendship and this ache for friendship is that it is so good the Lord put it there. Like that ache is good and he placed it. And maybe you're not in the season where, you know, tomorrow you're going to find the best friend and like be able to explain all of these experiences to them and like, you know, get the advice that you need and, you know, also outpour to them like right away. But he is giving you that recognition first and foremost for a reason. And I like just in getting that, like even this week of feeling this loneliness and this almost like desolation, like, why am I so, why do I feel so alone again? Um, like I, I could recognize that the Lord is here and that he's calling me into friendship. And it kind of led to this a lot of journaling, honestly, which I, I love. Um, and it being like the new year, just like this kind of like revisit of these moments in my life where um, at CUA, at Catholic University, I obviously had like such great community at points. Um, and then I would go home and I'd be like, well, I don't have this community here because like, you know, all my friends are in DC or they've gone obviously to their respective homes. So I would start to like go to random like Catholic youth events. <laughs> I literally like, when I tell you Monet, like I looked up like young adult Catholic, <laughs> like Pennsylvania, Young Adult Catholic Philly, Young Adult Catholic Chester. I was like every Young Adult Catholic group <laughs> that I could find. Amazing. Um, and funny enough, they were all, well, they were all like an hour out, but thankfully, like I had the car in the evenings when my parents were home from work and I got to just go to events. And that was where, honestly, the Lord provides in such crazy ways because I'm, I wasn't like, I was like the most, at least as a little scared freshman, I wasn't the most like outwardly just go and, you know, figure it out. But I felt that call all of a sudden to just go. And no matter what happened in that experience, the joy of going with the Lord saying, like, this is, I'm just going to, you put this event in front of me slash like, you know, you encourage me to look up all of these events. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go to the event and see. Um what what there is in store um and i remember sorry this is kind of like so many little stories my brain is going everywhere <laughs> but um this one of them there okay if anyone's listening and is it part of the kayak group because this is like such a huge beautiful catholic community in chester county pa um they were having like a kickball and then hiking event and i was like i have never played kickball i'm not i didn't play kickball in gym growing up so I, was really? like, I don't know what kickball is <laughs> And I have never gone on a hike before. <laughs> it's like, this is like, everything is new. The people will be new and the experience will be new. And I remember like driving up and sitting in my car and like seeing everyone play kickball. And when I was like surprised, it looked so much like soccer. I was like, oh, they're just playing soccer basically. <laughs> yes. um, but I was like, I, like, I just felt like a lot of fear and like stress about like going there and they're just, you know, they're having a good time. Am I going to just like disrupt it? I'm also, I'm so different, honestly. Like, I just feel like I'm, I was really, I was younger than most people. Like, culturally, I feel like I'm always kind of out of the loop sometimes. But my family's from Nigeria. So it's like, I just had all these fears I was letting build up in me. Um, and in that moment, like, I was reminded of our Blessed Mother and how she stored everything in her heart. Like, the first place, like, where God is sovereign, she placed it there. 
even the like the scariest thing, like her heart will be pierced, like Simeon said in the present, like the presentation of the Lord, like the most fearful things a mother could ever experience. She just placed it right there because she knew God would take care of it. And I just did that. Like it was this weird experience of like, okay, it feels too close. Like I, I don't want it to be that close, but I know the Lord will provide if I just give it to him. So that's what I did. I opened the car door. I walked out and I went on a hike for the first time. I played kickball for the first time. And I made like five, I remember five really wonderful girlfriends on that trip that I still talk to this day. And like, if I had not just like, you know, put myself out there and and surrendered that fear to the Lord, like nothing, <laughs> nothing could have happened. Honestly, I just don't know what would have happened. I, probably, I would have driven home and just not gotten that um gotten that experience so i'm just yeah so so good to like speak into those desolate places because the lord hears you and will yes. provide in some way like he always does he always answers our prayers like he was he's listening because he's there so he yeah. is oh i'm so glad you shared all that scholar there's so much that i would love to touch on but i the first thing that i would like to say and this is something where i'm actually working through this now through metanoia catholic which is a counseling so, program so i think scala do you know well anyways i'll talk about it who my counselor is after maybe not on this yes <laughs> but regardless i'm going through things with like my counselor coach right now okay, cool. and um the phrase that i have been living under which truly is not created by god because as we've been saying we were not created to be alone like mm. jesus literally walked this earth not solo. He wasn't like, I'm mm -hmm. going to just appear like by myself, come right? down from heaven, walk this earth, do what I got to do, die on a cross by myself. No, like he was born into a family. He had 12 yes. apostles, plus like all the women mm -hmm. that walked with him. He literally had two other men um, crucified next to him. Like everything oh up God, to yeah. his death, like he wow. was with people. So what I'm struggling through and the lie I'm hearing and that I've been hearing for years is I have to do the solo. And Ooh. even I believe it's like, obviously isolation or this feeling of being alone or loneliness mm -hmm. are things that the Lord allows us to experience. And sometimes he calls us into experience so we can experience him more fully. Mm -hmm. But then what I'm realizing, because I've experienced that very like clearly high school, college, but for like the past maybe five years, the devil can oftentimes mm -hmm. isolate us mm -hmm. and make us think, God doesn't hear you. God's not going to help you. Like yeah. right now with my ministry, like a message of hope, like for the four years I've been doing this, it's like consistently the past couple of years, I've been hearing, well, oh, you have to do this solo. Like mm -hmm. God's expecting you to do it all by yourself and blah, 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 and this and that. And that's why it's so important to have a spiritual director, Amen. Catholic community, like oh. reform wellness, metanoia Catholic, like so these ministries are there so we can differentiate of is that God? Is that Monet? Or is that mm -hmm. the devil? Because we can sometimes fall into loneliness, but then that loneliness can very quickly become isolating. And the yeah. devil wants us to stay there because if he gets us to stay there, then we don't venture out into beautiful Catholic community or events. We don't get ourselves to go to adoration because we believe for so long, God's not even with us anymore. Yeah, And so that's something I've needed to like work through, see and discern like into these three different categories of where are these thoughts, lies, feelings coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like if there has been those moments for you, Scala, like how have you differentiated yeah. who each thought, feeling, emotion, season of your life is coming from? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's huge, Monet. Yeah. Just like discerning whether this is like the Lord calling you into this place of right. retreat and, and this feeling of loneliness is just a part of that call or mm -hmm. the devil is literally just <laughs> trying to knock you down. Like he always tries to, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I really think in my walk with the Lord, it's been like those moments, like it's been moments of prayer. It's always moments. Of, it's always, it's always prayer. But I, I, I've been like this. Okay. Let me just go for us like a story. <laughs> well, I go around about way. <laughs> but, um, so this beginning of 2023, I went to the Holy land. Um, such a beautiful, honestly, an honor to be able to walk as Jesus walked. 
Um, and something that I left with, which has still been something I'm struggling to, to do, <laughs> is to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And like discerning that can be like the most difficult part of it. It's like, yeah, of course I want to do whatever the Lord is asking me to do. Um, and for me, it's been this realization that I have these like big, big dreams. I'm like very ambitious sometimes. I'm like just these huge things that I just like, I, I feel such a passion for them. Like the Lord places them in my heart and I'm like, okay, let's go full speed ahead um, and go for it. That like, I recognize that the Lord also, he will place these, these things in your, in your path that also will guide you towards that, that that thought or that prayer or that hope that you've been like holding and, and harboring maybe on your own. Um, and that's something that is so important to just continue to, to strive, to thrive, to thrive, to strive, to, to be on the path of prayer and getting to know him intimately because he will teach you about yourself. And when those moments are, are truly just your own pride, even if it's, it's, it's meant to be very sincere or when it's like, it's him actually calling you too. And it's, I know that seems like almost not advice because <laughs> it really is this like constant walk. And I think it's just getting to know the Lord and, and he teaches you who you are like before any, anyone else. But in my own life, it was like this, honestly thinking about, you know, vocation and the little vocation, but also the big vocation, but also the little vocation of like, what's my next step in like work and profession and school. And, you know, these, these places that I've been put in and, I like have been thinking about it so far in advance, like just the idea of it, like we can put like even friendship on this pedestal, like this is just the goal is friendship. But the Lord is maybe calling you to those first steps. Like maybe it's just this, like, what are your interests actually? So that way you can find out where you want to go to then meet the people that are your people, you know, or meet the community that is your community. Like he's, he's not going to just tell you, yeah, you're going to make friends tomorrow. Like, I mean, maybe he will actually, he could, he's, he's all powerful. He really could. <laughs> but I, I like more than more often than not, it's just those little steps that he's trying to, to, to pull you in that are good. Like they're simple, but they're good. And I feel like the, the, like, I feel like Satan honestly confuses us through those, like, big big goals that feel almost unattainable like but you're like but it's gonna happen one day it's gonna happen one day and we and we keep it out there and we white knuckle it and when you feel that pressure when you feel that like stress i've tried have so many times of like i just couldn't i need to make it up there myself like these are my hands and i'm like pulling myself up by my bootstraps i'm like that's not the feeling that you're gonna have when you're listening to the lord it's gonna be a receiving it's gonna be your arms are out and they're open and the lord is pulling you is helping you it's like i love thinking about the clouds and like <laughs> this is the this is the artist in me so if this isn't co connect with you that's okay <laughs> but I, I love looking at the clouds and how they're moving so slowly they're gonna they're getting to a destination or they're gonna poof and become rain one day <laughs> you know they're moving they're still moving and it's like the breath of god pushing them like truly mm -hmm. this like lightness of that breath of that literally of that breath like just following in the word of God, like just following his steps, like one at a time is how we get to our final destination. It's not these like huge moments where we like, I don't know, hear a thunder and the voice of God. Like, Oh wait, who was it? Yeah. That heard God in a still small voice. That's, that's it. It's mm -hmm. those little things that are peaceful that don't, that don't ache us in, in the, in the sense of like these huge things that don't feel accessible at all, you know? God knows us. He knows our hearts. And, and more, more times than often, like we just need to know ourselves and he's teaching us that in these small, in these small steps. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. I don't know. And, and that's helpful for me, Scala, because again, I'm, I'm going through not like specifically loneliness right now, but still this, I'm thinking I have to make all these next decisions in the coming months by myself. So yeah. what you're even saying about the waiting is like really like mm. striking a chord with me where I'm like, oh yeah, like I needed to be reminded of this because yeah, like the Lord is faithful. When I had been stripped away from like truly having a lot of friends in high school, I just kept saying, Lord, like I am willing to uphold my faith and put that at the forefront, but I really like, I need you to at least bring me one friend, one friend, one friend. And then it was two years later, like mm. faithfulness of two years, two wow. years later. Um, he did not just give me one friend, but he brought me to my junior year, 
life teen at our parish at St. Mary's. Wow. And there were over 50 high schoolers. Mm. All I was asking for, I was just like one person, one person, one person. But because he sees our, and he saw my faithfulness, he saw the consistency in my hope and my prayer. Like it wasn't easy, but I was like sticking with it. Yeah. He multiplied the desire. So mm. for anyone who is going through so loneliness, good. like, like hopefully that even can inspire you to lean into hope again. And I think that's another thing too, of oftentimes, like even right now, it's so easy for me to just like numb out or like run away from these feelings, emotions, seasons of life that the Lord has me in. But what if we were to lean into it? What if we were yeah. to lean into our desire for friendship while we don't have those friends or our desire for marriage while we're still single or like our desire for priesthood while we're still like in seminary, like whatever it is for your specific life of those who are watching, like w just think of what could happen if we leaned in yeah. and became more patient in our waiting, which you mm -hmm. were just speaking so, so eloquently about Scala in terms of sometimes we want the timeline to look the way it's supposed to be. But once it's all said and done and we come in and out of that loneliness or there's these seasons of life, I'm always, I always look back and be like, oh, I would never change that timeline. Like that was actually right? perfect. So good. Every time. Mm -hmm every single time that's so it's like that's so beautiful Monet. like in those seasons like he is going to he will multiply <laughs> like he's just that good of a god and our and our like allowing him to be sovereign like mm -hmm. he will do so much with that and oh my it's, yes, it's so good he will and i always say this i was saying this to my friend eily um who god willing will be also on the episode one day in the future but oh, awesome. we were just talking about um, God, like everyone's always like, oh, when you make plans, God laughs or mm -hmm. whatever it is. But like, he wants us to work in unison with him yeah. and he wants us to like, okay, you feel totally isolated by people. Don't stay there. Like God will bring you people, but we need to put in the work. Okay. You really want to like go into religious community, priesthood, married life, whatever, like, well then make yourself available to those discernment mm -hmm. retreats or to those dates um, and like, that's all going back to what you were even talking about in terms of looking up all these young adult communities to join. But, um, when I was talking to Eileen, we had, we had just said something like we messaged each other. Oh no, it wasn't even, it maybe have been her and one other friend, but we were saying God is, God can be funny, but mm -hmm. God is not cruel. Like, mm -hmm. he's, like that scripture passage, mm -hmm. which obviously I have like my book, my Bible right here. Love it. I love it. <laughs> I can't even think of the verse right now, but I'll have to find it and post it later. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, it's Scala, but it's like, it's the story of like what good father would give to his son, like a snake when he a asked snake. for yeah. like, you know, like all these good things. And the same thing with God, you're not, mm -hmm. you, there is no way that, and God's not like this, where you are going to say, God, I really need community. And what he gives to you instead is like further isolation mm -hmm. further Never. desolation like he doesn't do that no it's so true he's too he's so good like he is goodness itself <laughs> like it's reminding me of another verse which i think is in proverbs but it's man makes his man can make his plans and i love that it says can man can make his plans mm -hmm. but god guides his steps like those yes. walk the walk with the lord is always going to be with the lord and he's mm -hmm. not saying like, don't make your plans. Like you can do that. Like he's, we have free will and that's good. Like it's good to have those goals, but he will always, he's reminding us more so than anything else is like that he's going to be there for all oh, of these yes. steps. And at first I, re I remember listening to that verse and I was like, oh, okay. So I make my plans and then like, it just goes, it's completely different. Like, what's well, point <laughs> making the plan in the first place. <laughs> but no, when I think about it, like, no, but God is saying you can, like you can make that plan. That is good, daughter, mm -hmm. that is good. I will just be there for all of it. And I will guide you in the right path. Like that is what I need to listen to. And that's what I need to hear. Um, and a lot of it has been with the saints as well. That's something I, I wanna like throw out there as encouragement is when you're in those moments of like isolation and you just feel like you, you need someone to talk to, one, talk to the Lord, of course, but like find that saint or, or the parable, like a one, like one of the parables or a story in the Bible that relates to how you're feeling. 
in that moment. I think that can be so powerful to like, if we don't have someone else in person to be like, I'm going through this too. We can find someone in scripture. We can find another person who has walked through this in, in the faith and has made it to eternal salvation. Like we, we can, because they're human beings as well. And they've fallen and they've had these stresses and they've had this sadness happen in a, in, in a similar, if not almost the same way, because again, right. it's a human experience is this loneliness. So I also, yeah, want to encourage that you're never even alone in like our human experience, like ever. Right. So, yeah. And Scala, you're like even segueing so perfectly into like practical tips, useful tools already. So like, <laughs> why don't we just keep like rolling with it? Like even, like, we'll do it. I would say like realistically to help yourself, like seek out that community to seek out those friendships to draw yourself out of loneliness um make yourself approachable i remember mm. my mom always saying like if you're constantly walking into a room like this like no one's gonna want to talk to you like and i'm like but that's how i feel and she's like sorry like make yourself like be aware of your body language your body posture like make yourself available for someone to approach you so Body language says a lot, like you may be feeling a certain way inside and I'm not saying to like mask that or like dismiss that or pretend it's not there, but operate out like out of God, I, I want to like be joyful in this moment, like help fill in the gaps in those voids. And then even, yeah. um, yeah, like lean into this season rather than running away from it. Like, yeah bring to prayer like lord you have me going through this right now help me like stay in it with you until you're ready to bring me out of it um and you had even mentioned like adoration like times with yeah. the lord journaling yeah. um would you add anything else scala oh i feel like i could talk about like a million <laughs> different things and like and speaking to different hearts too like yeah. that person who kind of just wants the adventure like i'd say go to the events that you find online like honestly that was my facebook facebook events <laughs> like finding those catholic communities and then going to those events or just finding the thing that you love and going to it anyway mm -hmm. like that's the best place to find also people who would love the things that you love or are interested in what you're interested in so i really yeah. want to lean into that um if you can find an environment where you feel safe and comfortable doing that and just going for it um because i know that brought so much fruit to my own life um maybe to the hearts who are like very interior, like they're just, they're kind of sitting and they almost feel like they are alone. I'd say, um, listen to your intuitions because there have been moments where I'm in, like, I'm just like walking about my day, honestly. And I think of someone and it's one I haven't talked to in like years, <laughs> literally probably years, if not like just months or just been a while. And the thought to message them comes comes to mind like just be like hi you just came to mind like I hope you're doing well um that's something that I think has always brought so much goodness when I decide to take it and funny yeah. enough sometimes in the last week actually I've, I've had a few people come to mind who like I just I didn't end up messaging them and they messaged me and I, I really feel like the mm -hmm. Lord speaks yeah. in that way too like he will make it happen like if there's a, a person that he wants to place in front of you he will do it um, so I want to like lean into your intuition in that sense. Like if someone just comes to mind or you've been just thinking about a friend or a conversation that you had so long ago, like bring that up in conversation, like just text them. It's never going to hurt. <laughs> I think probably most likely they're just going to answer me like, hi, thank you for, for mentioning that. Or like, Hey, how have you been too? Um, or reach out for lunch or something like that. So definitely, mm -hmm. definitely want to encourage those who just, you know, feel very like kind of alone in that space as well. Um, and maybe one more <laughs> for those who are in a space where they they don't recognize the community in front of them, because I think that's also a whole nother topic of like oh, yeah. being present where we are. Um, like I'm I'm home right now and maybe, yeah, I'm not as close to my high school friends and I don't have as many of those community members like from the past in the area or the new friends that I make just don't they're not giving me like, you know, we don't have that depth, you know, that I really am aching for. Well, my family is right here. And even if you don't have a great relationship with your family, I think this is a probably, probably the Lord is actually placing you here for a reason to like get in conversation and offer your time and, and give of yourself in that way. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to encourage you there. Um, and that's Sweet. nice too. Yes. No, those are really important to mention, Scala. And I like how you broke all those down, but even too, to just, for those who need like the spiritual guidance to like, mm 
help, like, I don't know, think of, um, like Jesus, like needing even like, he didn't need the help, but he allowed the help for his cross to be carried to like exemplify, like we may need help carrying our cross. And so that comes in the form of, like I was saying, like either reform wellness, a retreat, metanoia, um, Catholic spiritual direction, just re like, if you are not already tapped into these resources within like your Catholic community or like your church or wherever you are, there are those like hands and resources, like willing to like reach out and be like, we will like personify Christ in this moment. We will show you a glimpse of our Lord and like, we'll journey with you. And that's where like hope can be restored as well. So, so true. Mm -hmm. So, so true. Well, Scala, this again, we could keep talking for this. Because again, like it's like it's still very much. It's not even like we're really looking back on like oh, like ten years ago. It's like no, this is like no. right there at the surface. Yeah, so, literally right now. <laughs> yeah. So once all of like once we end this um this chat, we'll continue chatting while the rest of you go check yeah. out Scala's um oh. links and all that <laughs> down below. But Scala, seriously, for those that do want to continue to journey like with you or like check out your beautiful like artwork or merchandise or tote bags, like. Where can people go to, yeah, just see what you're up to? Thank you. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, on Instagram, you can find me personally at Scala underscore E. Um, on Instagram for my Etsy shop, you can find us at Sustained Stories, one word. Um, but also we're on Etsy. So if you'd like to shop a Saint Print to journey with you in this feeling of loneliness and hope for community, um, maybe there's a saint out there for you. And I also have my YouTube page. So if you want to just journey in like all the random adventures <laughs> that I go on daily, um, that's at Scala Chioma. So S-C-H-O-L-A-C-H-I-O-M-A. Amazing. So, yeah, thank you. Well, Scala, I always learn a lot from you and I definitely you. admire you and your walk of faith. So thank you for bringing such a beautiful conversation to the table today to a message of hope. Um, yeah, and I will be sure to continue to pray for you as the Lord walks you through this temporary season. Mm -hmm. I think we have to remember that. Everything thank you. is temporary. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bode. And I'm continuing to pray for you and, and all of you listening that, yeah, this is temporary. And the, the Lord is here in this moment too. So mm -hmm. thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course, Scala. And for everyone who is watching again, be sure to check out everything in the description below. I'll include all these links and Bible verses that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And God willing, we will see you all next Thursday for another episode. We'll see you then. See you. Bye.